Welcome to this video on the unique climate of Dartmoor National Park. Dartmoor is a national park that lies on the southwest peninsula of the United Kingdom. It occupies an area of about 1,000 square kilometres, 40 kilometres north to south and about 30 kilometres east to west at its widest point. And this means it occupies an area about the same size as New York City. Dartmoor consists of two high plateaus split by a central bowl. And whilst not mountainous, its highest points are well over 600 metres above sea level meaning it's the highest land in the whole of southern England. Dartmoor is a truly unique geological feature and it's partly responsible for some very unique weather, not only on the moor itself but also in the surrounding area. In this video we'll be looking at exactly how the climate affects the land and in turn how the land creates its own unique climates. I'm standing here on Litterford Tor, which is about 450 metres above sea level. Now usually it would be wet, windy and probably misty. But due to an unusual high pressure system sitting over much of the UK and the North Atlantic, we have this crisp, clear weather today. Now usually the high altitude and exposed nature of Dartmoor determines the more extreme climate conditions. Firstly, there's a direct correlation between the pattern of rainfall and the pattern of relief, that is the height above sea level. The southwest peninsula of the UK, which is home to Dartmoor, predominantly experiences a maritime climate, with moist air masses moving in off the Atlantic Ocean from the southwest. As this southwesterly airflow is forced up over the hills, it cools and creates cloudy conditions, which in turn give rise to higher levels of precipitation. This is a classic example of relief rainfall. It's not surprising that many of Devon's rivers rise here on Dartmoor and that Dartmoor is also regarded as one of the most important areas for water in the southwest UK. Now the town of Princetown, which lies only a few kilometres from where I'm standing and is in the middle of the moor, is one of the wettest areas in the whole of England. It receives around 2,000 millimetres, that's a whole two metres of rainfall each year. Now, despite this heavy amount of rainfall right in the centre of the moor, only 35 to 40 kilometres away is the town of Tynmouth, which lies over to the east. Now, Tynmouth only receives 850 millimetres, so less than half the rainfall than that of Princetown. This is a classic example of the rain shadow effect of the moor. I'm standing in one of Dartmoor's many thousands of bogs and despite the level of rainfall, because of its height above sea level, the growth of flora and fauna on the moor is somewhat limited. And this is why Dartmoor is often referred to as a wet desert. The few trees that do grow on the open moor have been twisted and shaped due to the lack of coverage and the sheer force of the wind. This in turn means only the hardiest breeds of livestock can tolerate the harsh conditions. This unique climate can create some truly unique features and there really is no better example than this, Wisman's Wood, an ancient high altitude oak forest. The trees here are permanently stunted by a combination of the rocky ground in which they grow but mainly due to the high altitude. Situated on the side of a valley slope, Wisman's Wood also experiences another truly unique climate condition. As the sun, which is beginning to set, cools the surrounding area, cold, dense air from higher up starts to fall down the valley slope and pools at the bottom where Wisman's Wood is situated. This is called a catabatic wind and it has the effect of the valley, the lower part of ground, actually being colder than the higher open moorland. As a result of both its position and height above sea level, Dartmoor experiences some really extreme weather. But due to the lay of the land, it's also capable of creating some truly unique climates itself. <laughs> 